Um, okay, thank you. No, thanks for asking. That was a great thing. So I won't name I won't name any particular politician. I'll just say nameless politician uh, on video. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, yeah. So yeah, no, it's very important. What is the level of consciousness of the of what would be important is so. Uh, the, the, the thoughts will be will be imbued with the level of consciousness of the individual. Yes. So an individual who's calibrating, whose general calibration is unconditional love, sending a thought of love, will be extremely powerful. Mm. Yes. But the, the power that someone can send out will be equivalent to where they are on their uh, with their spiritual level of the work they've done. So let's say someone's at the level of uh, integrity and they try and send a loving thought, that would just be at the level of power they can access through their spiritual work. So that would be far less powerful as someone who's reached the level of love in their spiritual dedication yeah. and work. And uh, someone who's below integrity uh, will not send much at, mm. they may do, but will be more likely to send something at their equivalent level of negativity out. So, um, now, as you know, from Hawkins' work, the, the level of power, depending on your, the person's level of consciousness or the level of spiritual work they've done, increases logarithmically. So it doesn't even, it's like, you know, so as you do more spiritual work, the power of the love that you can send out in a thought is increasing on a logarithmic scale. So it's increasing, I'm not a mathematician, on a 10 by 10 to the multiple 10 by 10. So it's actually, so, so if someone is at below integrity and sends out a hate thought, uh, for someone at love, which is a logarithmic increase to send out one thought of love, you'd probably need how many people, I'm just saying this in, in rough terms, and any mathematicians will probably like catch me out on this. But I'm saying like someone who's, say someone who's just at basic in, integrity, maybe you'd need, who's an average person, shall we say, but integrity is still quite powerful, even for a normal person of integrity. You, and hate is a very, very low vibration, so it's got very little power. So someone, at a, you know, an average person in the street and integrity, for people sending hate, I, I, I'm guessing, I'm not a mathematician, but it's logarithmic scale, maybe for them to send a thought of love at the level of integrity would be, say, I'm just making this number up, like a hundred, no, maybe 10,000 would have to send hate to counterbalance that one thought of love at the level of integrity. Now, if someone has done enough spiritual work to get to the level of unconditional love, i.e. they've done a lot of spiritual work for... Well, like, one, one thought of love might be, because uh, it's logarithmic, might be something like you'd need, like, five million people hating to counterbalance that one thought of love mm. for someone who's done much more advanced spiritual work. Thank you. So, so, yeah, now the very interesting question which was raised, and it will, it will go off very soon, that's fine, is what if a lot of people send hate to you and your level is at similar to hate or below integrity? Then they will have a strong effect on you because you haven't got much power in you. Mm. So you're in a negative field and they're sending negativity to you and so it will unbalance you. Like if I'm not in integrity and a thousand people hate me, and I'm stealing donuts the whole day, then I'll probably feel very ill because I haven't got much of it, you know, someone at hate is calibrating low and I'm calibrating low, so that will mm. have an effect. So mm. yes, so sometimes if people hate you and you're not very spiritual, it will have an effect on you, yeah. It will have an effect. And um, also, but he, I mean, here's another thing which I didn't really want to share. I didn't want to really share it. What if... Uh, should I share it on camera? Uh, okay, I'll share it on camera. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> like, like demonic and satanic energies will, will, will attack you at your weakness, mm. even as a spiritual seeker. So they can, they, can, they, can, they can intuit where you're weak, and they can aim their attack where you're not in, where at your weak points, so you, let's say your weak point, even though your spiritual work is greed for donuts, or is lust, or something like that, 
then the temptation, if they're demonic or luciferic, they can read your aura. So they can then level their attack at where you're weak. So Lucifer and Satan aren't going to attack you where you're strong with temptations. Or if, they, or if they're going to go for you to pull you down from your spiritual place, they're going to get you where you're weak. So I didn't really want to share that on camera. But, uh, but there you go. If the battery lasted, then it was, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's, uh, it's meant to be. And I didn't really want to talk about voodoo and all of that stuff, so I'm hoping the camera sort of goes off. But, um, you know, Hawkins did say this, you know, don't mess with the astral realm and fortune tellers and what's not, because you don't know what they can read from your aura, which you think is not possible. So when, the, when you go to them and they say, like your grandmother says, you should have more spinach, um, and you go, well, if you... That's what my grandmother would say, eat more spinach. Now they've got you, because they can read your aura, they can get a certain amount of information from your auric information. So they know they tell you that. Your, grand, your grandfather says, eat more spinach, and now you believe everything they say. So those entities which can read your aura can tell you things, and then you can believe everything they tell you in the future. And you should come back next week, and the rate's going up to like 1,000 pounds an hour. But you believe them now because they said your grandfather said you should have more spinach. So they've got you. So these energies can pick up. When you're a naive spiritual seeker, you don't think they can pick up things from your history. There is like a level of information where people can, even negative spirits, can track information from you. And you, you're, not, you're not spiritually advanced yet to know they can do that. So you can then fall, fall hook like line and sinker. That's how a lot of naive students get pulled into cults because they say things and they have access to information that you think they can't have unless they're the real deal. So that's why, um, so didn't really want to say that on camera, but there you go. If the battery's lasting, it's meant to be. So you want to be, you want to be, um, so it doesn't mean that you can't be susceptible to negative energies being sent to you. And, uh, but you know, the more you get into the spiritual light, the less likely it is they can attack you. Because, you know, that light is just so powerful. Uh, all they can get you is where you're weak. You know, light, light cannot be attacked. But if you have a chink in your, in your chakras, that's where they get you. A chink in your chakras. So, the seven deadly sins, uh, they can't really attack you where you're in the light. Where you're in the light. But they can... If you, there's something you haven't resolved within your chakras around greed, around lust, around pride, uh, around power, uh, and uh, they'll, they'll filter that out and they'll get you on the points you're weak. But generally speaking, uh, a room full of people trying to hate me, I wouldn't be worried about it. You, know, you can hate me for hours and hours on end. As long as you don't try and shoot me dead, that's different, you see. But I'm not really worried about people hating me. Uh, okay.